Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today, AMD's new RX 470 4GB dedicated gaming graphics card. What is this? Why should you care? Do you want to play all current games at Full HD or 1080p resolution? Do you want a smooth 60 frames per second performance? And most importantly, do you want to be able to set the details to either high or ultra? Then you came to the right place. You should definitely consider this card. I'm filming this in August of 2016, and as of today, for $200, this is the best graphics card you can buy for that price point for 1080p gaming. There certainly are more expensive cards, and there are less expensive cards, but if you've got $200 to spend and you want to know what to buy, you're looking at it. Now, there are several different versions of this card from several different manufacturers. This one here just happens to be from XFX, if I can pronounce that right. There's also MSI, there's also uh, Sapphire, they're all fine. I will put links in the video description below to the full list of cards from both Amazon and Newegg. In the uh, middle of August of 2016, Multiple versions of this card are in stock at both places. By all means, pick the manufacturer you like, pick the one that looks the nicest to you. They all perform about the same. It doesn't really matter. I strongly suggest you buy based on price, preferably one less than 200 if you can find it. Now that being said, the one in front of me here is factory overclocked, but it's worth noting it's not a big overclock. It's only about 50 megahertz over the base clock. So when you go online and you see one card for 200 and one for 210 and one for 190, and they're all about 50 megahertz apart from each other, you'll never notice the performance difference. Buy the less expensive one, it's a better deal. Unless you just like the appearance of one or the other, in which case that's an aesthetic choice, not a performance choice. Now, during the course of this video, I'm going to be posting performance numbers up here. I don't have them in front of me right now in detail because I haven't opened it yet. But between the time I film this and the time I publish it, I will. I'll put it into something. Whatever it is, I'll post up here. I'll post performance numbers of a couple of games to give you an idea of what to expect. But in general, 1080p, full HD, 60 frames per second, high or ultra detail, this card will do it very, very nicely. And it will do it on a relatively low powered connection, a single six pin PCI Express power connector. More about that in a minute when we unbox it. At the end of this video, I will briefly, briefly compare it to several other cards. So if you're interested in whether you should get an RX 480 or 460 or a GTX something, wait till the end of the video, we'll talk about it. Now, on to the card. This card is in fact the highest end overclocked card from XFX, XFX. And if that's supposed to be pronounced differently, I apologize, but I've always pronounced it that way. This is their black edition overclocked card, but as I said, it's only about 50 megahertz faster than the standard card, so don't get too excited. Why did I buy this one? It was in stock when I went to buy. Yes, I do buy everything I review. Let's see here, it comes in a plain brown box. It actually does have the XFX logo right on the front. It's pretty simple packaging. Oh, well, there we go. More cardboard inside, I know. Some, some companies have better packaging than others. It's a small box, which probably has the nothing. Oh, there it is, driver CD. Don't use the driver CD, go to amd.com, download the newest drivers. Is there anything else in here? Hey, they do provide one, nice. Okay, I'm happy to see that. I'll talk about this more in a second. This is a uh, 2X four pin Molex adapter to a single six pin PCI Express power connector. I will open that up so you can see it better. So these are two four pin Molex connectors. That's a single six pin PCI Express power connector. I'm glad they provide one. It saves you the trouble of getting one. Here is a warranty card with the serial number and you know, please register with us and give us your information. And then here's the graphics card. That's interesting. They packed it in cardboard. I don't like that to be honest with you, but it, you know what, it probably doesn't matter. They sell millions of these things. I'm sure it's fine. I would have preferred to have seen it in foam but they packed it in cardboard. Now we'll stick that over there. Uh, 
And here's the card covered in lots of plastic. They love to cover these in plastic for some reason. I'm sure it preserves and makes it look nice. First thing you want to do is take all the plastic off. And let me think. Have to catch the corner to peel it off. There we go. This, um, this red sticker here just says uh, this is a zero speed fan. Essentially, um, what that means, here, let me take that off. I'll put that in my plastic pile. These fans will not spin when you're just running Windows. When you're not gaming, this is a completely silent card. The fans only turn when you're actually putting a load on the card. So essentially they're load temperature controlled. So if you want a very, very quiet computer, you put this card in when you're just browsing the web, when you're just watching a, a Netflix video, these fans won't turn, your computer will be very, very quiet, or at least as quiet as it was before you put the card in. Now when you're gaming, you load up Grand Theft Auto 5 or Fallout 4 or Hitman or whatever, yes, they'll turn, but your speakers are on or you're wearing headphones, so you can't hear it anyway. Um, this card does have a nice backplate. I mentioned it's the black edition. It is definitely their premium product. There is a custom aluminum backplate on the back, which is honestly mostly for appearance sake, but it does protect the circuit board and just provides a nice appearance. In fact, I'll turn it that way. Most people, if you have an open window in your computer, um, it does have the XFX logo uh, sort of, and I don't know if it's silk screened or not, but it's very uh, sort of shadow printed on the bottom. If this were installed in your machine, I think that would look very nice. Basically, black on the back plate, the white logo, which is not lit in any way, but you've got the white logo, you've got a black fan, basically lots of black with a white logo. It's very nice. You can see up here there's copper heat pipes. That should provide you with very good cooling. I like to see copper heat pipes because copper uh, conducts heat better than aluminum does. So that appears to be a fairly hefty heat sink. Weight-wise, it's actually fairly heavy for its size, which tells me there's a lot of aluminum and a lot of copper in there. I have no complaints about that. In terms of the fan quality, XFX does something really interesting with the fans I'll briefly mention. Now, this won't apply if you buy a Sapphire MSI, but these fans um, are removable. Take a look at that. If you ever have a fan die or the fan is making noise, these things uh, you can buy these individually and they just pop right in and right out. So you can replace the fans yourself easily without any muss or fuss. That's a nice feature. I would pay an extra $10 for that feature. I've had video cards where the fans, a year or two after you've bought them, the fans you know, get unbalanced or they get dusty. Even after you've blown them out, they still make noise. Being able to replace both fans that easily, or especially to take them out and fully clean the, um, the radiator underneath, I think that's a nice feature. So this is actually the first video card I've actually opened that has the ability to remove those fans, so that's nice. I have no idea what a replacement fan costs, but I'm sure you could go to XFX website and take a look. Another nice feature I want to talk about on this card is this, six pin PCI Express power connector. Let me talk about power. Now, this card will comfortably work on a 300 watt power supply, regardless of any other recommendations, so long as you don't have a massive high powered computer. You can use this adapter to convert two Molex connectors to a single six pin PCI Express power connector. The default wattage of this board is rated to 120 watts from AMD. Now this one is a factory overclocked card. It'll go a bit above that. It's not going to go above 150. I have no worries about putting this into a system with a 300 watt power supply so long as it is an i3 or an i5 non overclocked machine. Um, I am actually probably going to put this machine into the ASUS M32CD i3-6100 that I've previously reviewed and do live game performance demos. Um, I'll, I'm putting numbers up here, but keep in mind there's a difference between an average frame rate and playability. The question is how well does the game play? I'll put the monitor here, I'll have the computer here, I'll have the card in, I'll play the game live, not in a benchmark, but actually in the game to give you an idea of how smooth the performance is, how well does it play, how responsive are the characters, does it make noise? Um, that, those are real benchmarks, those are real performance, uh, not benchmarks, that's real world testing. 
I'm gonna use this adapter, this card, and that machine, it'll work just fine. So, I like the RX 470 for its lower power consumption over the 480. It's easier to install in more machines. Note, the MSI Gaming X RX 470 has an eight pin connector. You would have to replace the power supply on that card. So in that regard, if you, now if you've got a 500 watt or bigger power supply, if you have a custom machine you built yourself, this isn't an issue. You should have an eight pin connector. But if you have a pre-built and you only have a six pin available or you need to use the adapter, buy the Gigabyte, the Sapphire, or the XFX because they each have a version with a six pin connector. The MSI Gaming X has an eight pin. Although it's a very nice card, it just, you have to be aware of that. Ports, let's talk about ports for a minute. Let me take all the covers off. They've got small covers on these. These are uh, tricky to get off. They don't have a pull pin, but that's okay. There are five video ports on this card. There is a DVI-D, which I'll show you in a second. Um, note that these are not DVI-Is, it's a DVI-D. Now, AMD got rid of this support actually two generations ago on the 200 series. NVIDIA just got rid of it on the 1000 series. You can no longer use, here's the DVI-D port right here. That is a dual link connector. You can connect up to a 1440p monitor to it at 60 hertz just fine, but it does not support using the inexpensive small adapters to connect a VGA monitor. If you have a VGA monitor and you have an older graphics card and you're using either a VGA port or an adapter, one of the short adapters about that long that converts the VGA, uh, the 15 pin blue connector to the DVI port, you can't plug it in here. Now there are active adapters you can buy that will plug into ports and work, but they cost more. I mean, those little adapters come free with many cards. They're $2. You can't use them. HDMI is right here. There is a single HDMI 2.0 port. This will support 4K at 60 hertz. Why 4K? Why is that important? This is a 1080p gaming card, but you can easily plug a 4K monitor into this and run just fine. There's no reason why you cannot plug a 4K card into the a 4K monitor into this. Now, it will not game at 4K. It will not even come close to gaming at 4K. But you can game at 1080p on a 4K monitor. 4K is exactly four times the resolution, double the width and double the height. If you set your game to 1080p, it will scale perfectly on a 4K display. So in Windows, you can have high resolution uh, graphics, you can run your programs, your web browsing in very high quality on a 4K monitor, but set your games to 1080p and they'll play at 60 frames per second smoothly. It will upscale to the 4K, no problem. So it's nice that the HDMI port is, HDMI port is, uh, is a 2.0 to support 4K. The, Three display ports also will support 4K, uh, not a problem. So by all means, you can plug your 4K monitor into the display port or the HDMI port, so long as your 4K monitor supports HDMI 2.0 and uh, game on. Now, what else do I wanna say about this? That's actually about it in terms of the card itself. I do like the appearance. So many cards these days try to get all gussied up with stickers and colors and RGB lighting and they put red and yellow and all kinds of things. I like the black appearance. If you want a black on black card with good copper heat pipes, a six pin PCI Express connector, a nice custom aluminum backplate, you could do much worse than the XFX graphics card. Um, I mentioned before I would talk about different cards uh, towards the end of this video. Let me briefly talk about the RX 480 and then I'll talk about the RX 460. These cards are all running about $200. There's one or two that you can see at $190. Most of them are at $200. A couple of them are at $210, $220. I think this one right now is running at $220 because it's the kind of the top of the line premium product that they offer. It's the black edition. The list price of the RX 480 4GB card is $200. If you can find one in stock, by all means, buy one, because the RX 480 is 10 to 15% faster. The thing is, it has been out of stock all month long, and it might be in stock by the time you watch this, or it might not. It also might come back in stock at a higher price. If they're selling that well, they might raise the price by $20 or $30. Would I pay 220 for an RX 480 over 200 for this? Sure, if you want an extra 10% performance, $20 over 200 is 10% more money, 
for 10% more performance, there's no problem with that. Would I pay 240 or 250 for an RX 480? No, I would not, because it's not worth the, the price increase for an extra 10% or so performance. Not to mention the fact that as we go into the fall, I fully expect the price of these to drop by 10 or $20. You may very well find these for 180 and 180 this is definitely a good buy. Going down, what about the RX 460? The RX 470 and 480 are very close in performance. The 460 is not. In fact, the 460 in some situations is less than half the performance of the 470. It actually has less than half the shaders of the 470. It is a completely different card at a completely different price point, except that there are a few that they're trying to sell for 150 and you should never pay 150. But that's really a good $120 card. So the RX 460 is a completely different product at a completely different price point than the 470. The 470 is a no compromises 1080p card. The 460 is not. Now the 480 is faster if you can find one. What about NVIDIA? What do they offer? Well, NVIDIA's next generation card that comes closest to this is the GTX 1060. Here's the problem. The least expensive 1060 I would recommend buying is $260. That really puts it out of this price category, especially if you can find one of these for 180 or 190. That's not really competition in my eyes. Later this year, I fully expect NVIDIA will come out with a GTX 1050, which probably will be at about $200 and may very well compete with this. That being said, in next generation games, this card compares very favorably to the performance of a GTX 1060. The GTX 1060 in older games, DirectX 11 games such as Grand Theft Auto 5 and Fallout 4, is faster than this card. But in newer DirectX 12 games, it's not. You take a game like Hitman, Ashes of the Singularity, um, Doom, using the new Vulcan technology, those games play almost as fast within 5% on this RX 470 as they do on the GTX 1060, which costs more. So the question is, are you primarily interested in playing current generation games that use DirectX 11? Or are you interested in buying a card for the next three years that will play all the next generation games and you don't want to upgrade for a while? For $200 or less, this is an awfully good value for your money because of its excellent DirectX 12 support. So, that's the AMD RX 470 4 gigabyte card. I don't recommend the 8 gigabyte. Somebody's bound to say, what about the 8 gigabyte card? Don't bother with the 8 gigabyte card. If you're going to buy the 8 gigabyte card, you might as well step up to the RX 480 because the price premium they're asking for the 8 gigabyte versions of these doesn't make any sense. But I think at 200 or less, this makes a lot of sense. Did you like this video? Click like. Did you not? Don't remember to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, you'll get notifications for when the live performance demos of this come out, including when I put it into that ASUS M32 uh, CD machine and show you how well it performs. Leave your questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, and suggestions in the comment section below. And definitely check out the links in the description below. They'll take you to both Amazon and Newegg. I will specifically link this card because I reviewed it. But also take a look at the links to all the RX 470 cards at both places. Buy whatever you prefer in terms of manufacturer, appearance, and price. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.